Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nukminu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected elders, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, After a long absence, I have come back to the normal duties of Jumara. In fact, I did come back on 3rd of January. But after coming here, I was not well. So I had to be in isolation. And with your dua, alhamdulillah, that I am again feeling well. Any sickness or any illness, It is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How we react when we are sick. What we feel when we are sick. And what is the relation between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are sick. This is what which makes our service to Allah perfect. If we don't have tawakkal on Allah, if we don't depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we don't have a firm belief on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means we are not going to pass the test. Mahmoud Ghaznavi 
very famous name. Our ruler in Afghanistan, he had many companions and he had many staff members of his palace. And not those staff members that they were very poor or deserving, no. They came very highly educated families. They came from rich families. But out of those, there was one who came from a village. His name was Ayaz. And he was the most favorite servant of Mahmud Ghazna. All those other staff members, they used to get jealous because Mahmud Ghaznavi was paying more attention towards Ayaz. He, was, he would always give him preference. Mahmud Ghaznavi was approached by the other companions and by the other staff members and they said, we love you so much, we serve you so much, but we see that your attention towards Ayaz is so much. We feel left out. Mahmoud Ghaznavi said, okay, wait. One day he ordered someone to bring some fruit which is bitter. And he cut the slices and gave each slice to each person. And he asked them to eat. As soon as they ate and they said, Oh, your highness, this is bitter. Everybody is trying to return it. But he saw in the corner, Ayaz was eating it very enjoyingly. He said to Ayaz, Ayaz, don't, isn't it bitter? He said, yes, it is. But you are eating as if you don't feel that bitterness. How come? He says, your highness, I have had from these hands of yours so many sweet things throughout my life. If today, if I could have a slice bitter, I would still eat it because it is coming from your hands. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many ni'mati and so many an'am, then if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us sickness, some calamity, some gham, sorrow, how shall we react? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us through the test and if we pass the test, that is the only way that we can say, Ya Allah, you have given us so many blessings and so many bounties. Now this, it's okay. But one sickness is very serious one. See, there are two kinds of sickness. One is physical and one is spiritual. In physical sickness, what you do? You might lose power. You might lose any sense. But the spiritual sickness is such. If one gets involved or if one gets sick spiritually, it is not only that it will physically damage you, it will also 
will not let you live in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. I would just tell you what the spiritual sickness is. I have just recited one ayat of Quran e Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what your eyes the treachery the treachery of your eyes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of it And what's hidden in your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of that too. Now you would know what sickness we are talking about. There is a sickness of bad eyes. As each and every part of our body has got fornication, zina, must have heard. Our hands got zina too. Our hands have got fornication. Our tongue has got fornication. Our eyes have got fornication. It is only when you see someone with the bad intention that is the zina of your eyes. And Quran Kareem mentioning in this ayat. It is trying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this ayat so that we can correct this sickness of ours. I will tell you at the end what is the way how to correct it. But let me tell you, this is the sickness 90% plus people are involved in. Junaid al-Baghdadi, he was going with his murid and he saw the murid was walking with him. Murid saw one boy who was Christian and he was very beautiful looking boy. So he asked Junaid al-Baghdadi, he said that would people like this face go to Jahannam? Will be burned in hellfire? Junaid al-Baghdadi said, it looks like that you have seen him with your bad intentions. And if you have done, you will see the results soon. He was half as of 20 years, half as a Quran. And he stopped. He started forgetting Quran Kareem. And within few months, he forgot the whole Quran. -e see, this is the if we see with the bad intention, there is no one who will see us and no one would know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would know. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran Kareem, Farmaya ke kullil mu'minina yaghuddu min absarihim wa ya'fadhu furujahum. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell all mu'minin to keep their gaze low. To keep their eyes low and protect your private parts. One child says that, he said, I only remember one line. He says, Aankh se aankh hai ladki mujhe dar hai dil ka. When there is a collision between two eyes, what is the victim? Heart. And what is the eventual victim? Private parts. 
see the relation <coughs> one pious person said he said that an nazr saham min saham iblis these eyes they are the arrows these are the arrows one bad evil eye is the arrow of the one of the arrows of shaitan see when you do zina let commit adultery what you do you have to commit you have to make preparation you have to agree with someone you have to spend money you have to have a place for it then there is a fear of getting bad name but if you see someone with the bad intention then nobody has seen you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has and he knows we feel that this is easier no it is not the result of this is 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 spoiling the whole life is spoiling the whole spirituality those hearts which have got bad feelings inside and have bad intention towards anyone they cannot hold quran e kareem they cannot hold hadith they cannot remember what dua to make to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the spirituality is gone but we take it very easy in one hadith prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al aynani tazniyani wa zina hum an nar eyes do zina and their zina is to look to look with bad intention of wal uznani tazniyani wa zina hum al istima' your ears also do zina and their zina is to hear na mahram for example listen to the fahsh songs listen to the vulgar songs that's the zina of ear wal lisani yazni wa zina hum nut our tongue also does zina and the zina of tongue is to talk immoral things towards to any woman who you is not mahram to you that is zina of your tongue wa zina hum nut wal yadani tazniyani wa zina hum al bats and hands also have got zina and that is touching na mahram or touching with any anyone with the bad intention that is the zina of your hands prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam explaining this hadith so much detail shouldn't we worry about it as i said that more than 90% people are involved even older not younger even elderly they they are involved aren't we shouldn't we do the preparation to go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was one hikayat written maulana jalaluddin rumi has written he said that there was one lady who was walking and one person comes and says to her that look you are so beautiful i love you she says okay i really have i have so much respect of your view but the thing is my younger sister is coming just behind me 
if you pay attention to her rather than me. So as soon as he turns around, she kicks him and she says, is this your love? Is this your love that you heard better coming and you have to turn your face and looking for it? This is the love we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say we claim the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we get chance to do something, miss something and get the benefit, we say okay we'll do it now and we'll worry about that later on. This is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have. We should have preparation to go in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean heart. Let me tell you, those who are 60 years, 70 years, their whole life has just passed like this in a blink. They have spent so much long, but now they are so close. Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thani Rahmatullah when someone would bring him a child and say, Mawlana, can you say azan in his ears? So he used to cry. He used to say that I am thinking that this big long life I have gone through now this child is starting his journey. He has to go through all this. He cried. This is our preparation should be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever we have done as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell mu'mineen to keep their eyes low if we live like this we will not see anything we will only see what is necessary for us to see if we make our preferences wrong, if we set our priorities wrong, the result would be wrong too. If we set our priorities as per the requirement of Jannah, if we set our priorities and if we set our preferences to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala razi with us. To please Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in akhirah. Then we will not be worried what's going on outside. All we would be worried. I know one person in Sydney. He goes 10 minutes before the calls or work, they close. 10 minutes before that. People ask him, said, why do you do that? He said, because in 10 minutes I've got the list, I get everything and I let, see less people. Subhanallah. That's ihtiyat. This is how we protect ourselves. This is how we can plan ourselves. If we live in this kind of dunya, this western society, we have got more responsibilities how we can protect our Iman, how we can protect our children, how we can live in this society so that our way to Jannah is not affected. So eyes should be protected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has <coughs> in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does la'nat on those لَعَنَ اللَّهُ النَّاظِرَ وَالْمَنْظُورَ إِلَيْهِ Even those women, they say, what is parda? Oh, just come and get together. Makhlut. It is for men and women both. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does la'na on those who are not protecting themselves from the bad eyes and evil eyes, 
either it is coming from women to the men or it is coming men to women both are in the same boat and they will be the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lanat will be done so we should protect our eyes we should keep our eyes safe from all those calamities and try to avoid the committing the sin of eyes may Allah give us tawfiq May Allah give us the tawfiq to protect each and every part of our body from the sins. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.